So let's take a look at number 27. Um, by the way, in this case, the independent variable looks to be z. So when they ask us to take the derivative, our derivative is going to be dy dz. And let's go ahead and attack the first part of this. The first part of this derivative is going to be a product rule. So it is, let's go first times the derivative of the second. And of course, we've got this in our flashcards. We've got it memorized. We've got it on the tip of our tongue. Plus, OK, uh, the second. <laughs> no, the chain the chain would be a one. Z is Z is when we take the derivative of Z with respect to Z, we get one. Okay. Now I'm glad you're thinking about the chain rule. Okay, but typically we only worry about that is when this thing is something other than just the plain variable of integration or der or derivation. All right. So uh, sec second times the derivative of the first minus, and now I've got this, uh, that one. Uh, so the power on that is 1 half. Keep the inside the same. Reduce the power by 1. And the chain rule is going to be negative 2z. Do you notice how I cross my z's so they don't look like 2's? I suggest you either cross your z's or you use a uh, a curse of z. That's a really bad curse of z. There we go. That's better. Okay, do one or the other because otherwise your twos turn into z's. It gets very complicated. Or you do a two with a loop. Okay, let's clean this up. Over here, I get negative z over the square root of one minus z squared. Right here, I get a inverse cosine of z, or sometimes called the arc cosine of z. Over here, that 2 and that 2 cancel. This negative and that negative knock each other out, leaving me a positive z over the square root of 1 minus z squared. And, surprise, those two cancel, leaving us inverse cosine, or sorry, yeah, inverse cosine. Are we good? Okay, so that was, I won't erase it. I'm just going to keep score here. I did 21 also? Oh, I did, okay.